Welcome to Gambling with an Edge. And now, here are Bob and Richard. Good afternoon. Welcome to Gambling with an Edge. I'm Bob Dancer. And I'm Richard Munchkin. Today, our guest is blackjack player Joe, who does not have a last name for some reason. And to provide moral support and as a bodyguard, he brought along Colin Jones, who uh, has been on our show a number of times on the um, the church team, Blackjack Apprenticeship. Very good. So um, before we get into talking with Joe and Colin, there was an interesting thing in the news that a player who was playing in Dublin, Ireland, um, was doing really well on a roulette machine. And he lost one night, and the next night he kept winning and winning and winning. And they cashed out part of it and said, go back and keep playing. We're having trouble getting the money, but we'll pay you. And he went and paid, and then they finally decided, we didn't think you're cheating, so we're not going to pay you. He took it to court, and the court said the casino does not have to pay if it doesn't want to. Period. End of story which would mean if you were thinking about playing in Ireland. Well, all of the UK. All of the UK? Yeah, I mean, there have been a number of cases in London where they have just stolen people's money because basically their argument is we are private clubs. It's against the rule to count cards. You were counting cards. We're stealing your money. And um, (laughs) But, right, they do do that in card counting. This is roulette. This is on a roulette machine. They, yeah. they, um, they, uh, it, there was ac- accusations of some kind of past posting that the machine was allowing past posting, which would, if true, invalidate the win, to be sure. But, uh, it was, the court didn't get into whether or not that was a, a realistic accusation or not. It just said if the court doesn't want to, if the mach- casino doesn't want to, doesn't have to. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, the UK casinos are, as bad or worse than Indian casinos, so you have to, uh, you know, enter at your own risk. All right. Let's talk to our guest. Um, Joe started with a $10,000 bankroll four years ago. He's up to um, $900,000 himself, and he's bankrolling some others, puts him into the six-digit reign. Uh, for some I reason, think that gets to seven. Is that Already seven? Six digit range. Oh, wow, well, boy, eight. he's really going to go. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it could be eight, nine. We don't know. Yeah, he doesn't know. It's just it's at least the low sevens. <laughs> so he plays blackjack full times and thinks it's a viable source of income for new and seasoned players alike. Joe, welcome to Gambling with an Edge. Thanks for having me. Your your guys' voices have kept uh, us company on the road. For many, many hours and those long, dark drives in the middle of nowhere. So I appreciate you guys having the show. I I found it more interesting when when female APs come up to me and say they go to bed with me every night. And I just think that is really kind of interesting. <laughs> but uh, how's Well, that's it? what I was thinking, but I don't want to oh, say well, it. Oh, well, <laughs> good. Let's go. All right. So it's Too much information. <laughs> what was your initial goal when you started counting cards? Okay, so when I when I first started, um, I told myself, you know, if I could just make like an extra ten thousand dollars for the for the year, like to supplement my income, that would be just awesome to just make an extra ten grand playing blackjack on the side. And then uh, by the end of that first year, I was up to five hundred thousand. So <laughs> the goal kept changing. You know, my my friends would ask me, so okay, so you hit ten thousand. So are you, are you gonna like stop now? And I was like, well, the goal like changed to twenty. And then, like, you know, some several months go by, and then it's like, okay, the, the goal changed to 100, and it just keeps going up and up. So, And um, how did you actually start? Did um, you get a book? Or? Yeah, so um, I'm, a, I, I'm like a blackjack apprenticeship uh, baby born and raised. Like, I, I saw the movie 21, um, was, you know, it's Hollywood, and they over-embellished stuff, so I wanted to kind of do a little fact-checking, and then... Uh, came across some YouTube videos, uh, and the I saw the girls in the strip clubs in the movies. Is that what drew you in? Yeah, no, the uh, the uh, the losing, like when they were um, only like drunk or like just the the physical like abuse from the casino staff. It just seemed a little like too much, and that and it's also like the um, idea that you have to be like a genius to be able to do it. 
uh, I kind of wanted to look into that. So then I found um, Blackjack Apprenticeship's video. They're kind of outlining mistakes in the movie 21. And you could tell that we weren't geniuses. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, I saw the video and I was like, you know, because YouTube, it's full of people who, who kind of like claim that they that they um, have this knowledge, this you know, the secret knowledge, and then but then I saw that their their documentary Holy Rollers, and then that convinced me like this is all real. And the thing I liked about that movie was it was like these guys aren't um, mathematicians, you know, and that's what appealed to me was because I'm so not um, uh, like uh, sharp when it comes to uh, mathematical theory or anything like that. I'm just like a worker bee, and I just work really hard, so it just really appealed to me. And did you buy a book first, or you just went to no, the boot camp? Or? Uh, I, no, I just um, I joined their website. I did their uh, video training course. Um, I watched it a few times. I, I listened to Gambling with an Edge. I listened to their podcast. You know, uh, read a bunch of forum posts, um, and then I uh, just started practicing with their. They had they have some drills um, online that you can use and uh, on the uh, iPhone app you can use, and that's pretty much all I I needed. Um, and and also uh, one of the original goals too was to get backed off of every casino in the U.S. when I first started. So. <laughs> and how far have you gone to uh, in the, so, in, yeah. in that goal? It's uh, I have a little, I have some stats here for you guys. So I've been backed off of 333 properties, uh, trespassed from 44. I've been falsely arrested at two. <laughs> so uh, the back offs, those are actual properties. So I've been backed off, you know, two or three, four times at one place so it could be more but the, how many um casinos are there with blackjack in the united states it's around like 450 wow in that so range so yeah you've i mean really, are there any casinos you've never even been to yet oh yeah there's yeah i've had i have a ton i haven't been to um some of the more rem- remote ones or or places that were just uh you know i may, may have heard it was a lower max so i kind of skipped it but have I you like, been to every casino in las vegas yeah, I've, I've blackjack. Someone asked me that last night. I've been to every casino in Vegas, but I haven't been backed off in every casino in Vegas. So, well, they keep building the damn casino, so you're never going to be able to retire <laughs> yeah, or change exactly. your names, right? Yeah, yeah. So the first year, you go from ten thousand to five hundred. Mm-hmm. How? So your first ten thousand dollar bankroll. What were you betting, and how uh-huh. did you ramp it up? And I assume that yeah. during that year, you never hit a big losing streak. Right. So, so um. Uh, I lied to you guys. I didn't start with ten thousand. Okay, I actually started with five thousand before I found um, some resources. So I, I started with five thousand, and then I was betting two by five hundred with a five thousand dollar bankroll. <laughs> <laughs> so and, what could possibly go wrong? And, I uh, I mean I knew I knew how to count and I knew you know the true count and all that stuff, but I didn't know anything about bankroll management. So I, I went to the casino. I was on a work trip. You know, played, lost all my money. Lost my entire bankroll. And then the next morning we went to go um, work with a client and he happened to be like an advantaged player of 30 years. Like the odds of that was just blew my mind. And I was like, this is a sign. And then he told me, I told him what happened last night. And he was like, you need a like $50,000 bankroll to be doing what you were doing last night. And that just like blew me away. So um, I knew I, I would read forum posts and people would say their bet spreads, you know, like two by 500, uh, you know, this. And then I would be like, okay. I know what a bet spread looks like, but I didn't know what risk or ruin was. So we did some bankroll. We did some bankroll coaching, yeah. right? When, when yeah. you yeah. tried again with ten grand, and then I got I a helped new him out. So he wasn't spread. playing at ninety nine percent risk of ruin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so so yeah. then the mm-hmm. second bankroll was really ten thousand. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. And what did My you start out betting? Was, um, that was uh, I think it was like two. The top bet was maybe like two by two hundred on a really really good game. Like it, it was like stand seventeen double deck like. Um, you know, half a deck cut off. So, and the ramp just I, I sort waited. of went straight up from there. Yeah, I mean, it was I had some like highs and lows, of course, but I I waited till fifty thousand to play any shoe games. So I I concentrated on good, uh, really um good double deck games for a while to keep the risk low and the um hourly high enough. And uh, would you double the bank and then double your bet, or how how did you do that? Um, uh. I can't remember specifically, but I just use CVCX to keep it in the range. I think that sounds about right, though. Like, um, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't ch- resize my bet, you know, every week or so or anything like that. I waited a while, and I also waited before I told anyone what I was doing until I hit fifty thousand because I just didn't want to. I didn't want to say to anyone like I'm a professional blackjack player if 
Right. I didn't hit right. a certain amount. And and you weren't like Yoshi where all you could do was win. No, no. Uh, he just no, he I, played a thousand hours in that first year, yeah. right? Yeah, I just hit oh, the that's road. That's a lot of hours. Yeah, I, I was a freelance person before, so I didn't have a job to go to. So I packed my car, I hit the road, and I was pretty much uh, gone like six, seven months out of the year, um, just on a long extended trip. And I um I had some long. I mean, I had like a two hundred hour losing streak in, in there in that first year, and. And then I had another oh, really? one that was like a hundred hours, you know. So it's I was oh, well, able to experience that's it. That's actually, yeah, that's yeah. Um, <laughs> battle testing. I yeah, mean, exactly. It, yeah, because yeah, I don't think Yoji has ever had yeah, a two hundred hour losing streak. I was getting the impression you were thinking he had what what my old teammate would say is a horseshoe up his ass. But, <laughs> right. You right. Know, no, he grounded. I mean, he won a lot, but is that any more comfortable for a blackjack <laughs> player than it is for a video poker player? <laughs> I don't think so. You can play standing up uh, oh. in, in some places, actually. Some places don't allow it but um uh, wow uh, so uh and ha- so what happened w- do you remember when the 200 hour losing streak like where yeah your mm-hmm. that, bankroll was that when was that, happened? that was actually when i was i hit about 90 or 100 thousand, and then um i was at a place that was letting me play for two months probably because i was losing for so long um and i was able to grind out of that but it was halfway through the ch- the losing streak i was just like hour 100 or so i was just like oh, i don't know if this is what i want to spend my life doing like i don't know if this is uh what i want to do so but then i i got comforted be, with the fact that like the math hasn't failed me so far up to this point you know and um i had smaller losing streaks and, and i was able to dig out of that through the math so that's kind of something that always like helped me out was like hey like it hasn't failed me yet so i'm gonna keep going until when you were at you were at 90 and you hit this mm-hmm. losing streak how yeah. low did you go before uh, it started i lost to turn 30 around? Um, and then I, I was there for a while and then I was able to get it back. So, Hmm. but then later, like, you know, that's, uh, I heard stories from people before saying like, you know, they, they, they told me they're losing horror stories and I was like, oh, that won't happen to me because I'm so aggressive with my play. Like, because you know that, but you know, it does and it will happen to you and, um, and it'll get worse, you know, like you'll have losing streaks that are going to be longer and, and more money later. So. That's just a reality that you have to accept going right. into it. And when and when you uh, started out, were, were you playing as a refusal or would you get a player's card? Um, starting out, I played with player's card a lot just to get save money on expenses. And uh, and it was just fun, you know, when you're getting into the professional gambling. Like, it's just like such a fun part of it, getting all the comps and, you know, you're um, kicking ass at the casino and then grabbing goodies on the way out. So, I don't know. It's just like... I, that we had this discussion last night and I, you know, it's, it's really important if your bankroll is really low to save money on the expenses. But at the same time, like you only live once and like, don't just because if, do you really just want more money? Like, like being miserable at the table to make a little extra more money or do you want to enjoy yourself on the road while you're traveling and living this yeah. life? So. Yeah. I mean, there, there comes a point where you institute the no motel six rules. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. That, yeah. That took a while. <laughs> couple of years i think we had uh my girlfriend and i we had a bed bug incident where oh my god we were you know she uh woke me up and just screamed because we saw there was the actual the bed bug was huge and it was crawling around there was a couple of them and it, she Small got bed she, bug would have been okay <laughs> yeah, yeah, she got bit and uh that was like okay maybe we should like up our game a little bit on the hotels <laughs> and safe yeah. and not to be so cheap so so sh- she was with you on this ride. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I was fine with just sleeping in the other bed, you know. Hey, that one bed is infested, so let's just sleep on the other bed. That'd be fine. Because <laughs> the bugs but, don't know how to cross yeah, the Yeah, but she didn't go for that. So. No, the point I was making is I um, have uh, my previous wife, Shirley, uh, knew about gambling, and then we got married, and then... The first time I lost three thousand dollars, and it was, like, it was community property, and this she freaked, and it was no fun. So I don't know uh, how mm-hmm. serious you are with the. Um, yeah, how did your yeah. gr- when you first approached her with mm-hmm. this idea? Hey, I'm gonna. You lose thirty thousand in a hundred hours. Now is yeah. she uh, cool with this? Well, as long she, as there's no bed bugs. She or? was a dealer um, previously, so she understood the whole um, gambling environment, and then. Um, 
and you know when we started talking she knew the whole deal right away and and she understood everything about it so um that's she, rare she, she played really rare she plays too and um she's been playing for the past couple of years so i trained her and then we kind of hit the road together for the past two years after i was solo for about two years myself so. oh oh so so she wasn't in that first no, run no. The, oh okay yeah. okay yeah, yeah. mm-hmm um, so when she, she met you, waited you were until you were rich, and then she came along. That, <laughs> yeah. that helps. <laughs> uh, so, do you work as a team, or um, um, we don't do any BP stuff? We just uh, we just take turns. We um, switch off, and uh, you know, because you know, it's really easy for them to identify one of us if the other one's in the in the building, because it's an easy match to say, "Oh, we think this might be Joe," but if and then they see her come in. Like, oh, that's definitely Joe. Like you know, if they have two, so we try to just separate. You're not known as the yeah. Beauty and the Beast team. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think we're both beauties. <laughs> um, Inner so, beauty. Yeah. Well, yeah. his uh, his girlfriend is actually in the studio as we're talking <laughs> right. about this. So he has to be and, careful uh, what he says. <laughs> uh, calling her a beauty is no stretch. So that would be fine. Uh, so. When you so you use the high low mm-hmm, right. now, one of the questions that uh, people keep sending me to mm-hmm. answer on the show that I haven't done until now is, what does it actually cost you to use the high low? First of all, I have to say I'm in your camp that it's better to use the easier count and try to play more hours uh, with less mistakes. But what does it actually cost you to play the high low versus? And I'm talking about in shoe games now. Mm-hmm. Versus, you know, a two or a three level count. Mm. I'm going to shoot this one over to Colin. <laughs> well, you got to compare apples to apples. So can you play same number of rounds per hour, you know, with the same level of mental fatigue, um, with the same, you know, limited errors on a more complicated count? And if it's apples to apples, it's maybe, you know, four or 5% from the simulations I've run. Like, you know... It, and what I tell people is it's really easy to get another four or five percent. Play four or five more rounds per hour. You know, if you're playing a simpler <clears throat> count, uh, like, you know, Joe or myself, we can play high low at, you know, 300 plus rounds per hour. Uh, and this isn't fabricated. This is like dealers or uh, a pit boss said, clearly Joe isn't a card counter because he's playing too fast. You know, well, could could he do that with high up to with an ace side count, you know? Right. And my argument has always been, even if they could, I mean, because they always claim that they can. Yeah. Yeah, I can play even drinking and, I, you know, I don't make mistakes and all that. But um, I think it can go as high as a 10% difference. Sure. Um, but if you could play an extra 10 minutes because you're not fatigued. Yes. Or, so- or add an extra green chip onto your bet. Yes. You're going to make up for it. You know, so, so at a point, I taught myself high up to uh, at early on, uh, both Ben and I, who I ran a team with, we were teaching ourselves halves. But the reality is with high low, I can play fast. I can be natural and comfortable in the casino. And if I have to answer a question from the pit boss, I'm not having to adjust my feet and everything to make sure I've got my ace side count. And it just feels like uh, for for at least our ethos, which is like, it's really the Ian Anderson, keep it simple, stupid, you know, like learn the system, do it fast, efficiently, get the hours in, be aggressive. It, you know, it's everything Tommy Highland says is what I would argue. And I think some people can't help themselves, but want to have to prove that they can do the most complex. And if you're doing it for a mental exercise, great. But my friends have made the most money. It's been with high, low or, or, or something equivalent. Yeah, mine too. Um, what about the fact that the pit, if they're watching, they're comparing your play against high-low because they assume you're playing high-low. And the the more advanced counts are not going to match up accordingly. Is it possible you'd be able to play longer by not using the high-low? No, because 95% of the time they are going to correlate. And it's no longer a pit boss who's counting you down. It's somebody in the eye who's using software. And the software is just going to look at all your bets and see which ones were, how much were you betting when the count was positive and how much were you betting when it was negative. And even if you're making some errors, they're still just going to throw you out. 
Um, I think maybe it, it, I would w- draw the question. Maybe, maybe like one or two places where it's it's really small, and you have a pit boss who's kind of like an AP enthusiast, but he doesn't know that much, and maybe give you a little bit of time. But ninety nine percent of the places, no, maybe, yeah, maybe. yeah, and and which brings us to the subject of cover, mm-hmm. right? Uh, do you play any cover? Did you play any cover? Okay, so yeah, I wanted to get into this because like my. I think with my personality and and getting into this, like I just like hated giving up anything to the casino, like, <laughs> and especially I mean, when you have a small bankroll, you can't afford to do any kind of cover. But um, even past that, even when I had enough to do the cover, I just it just felt like slimy to me to like give them anything. Like, um, I just play super aggressive, um, maximize as much as I possibly can, and I just move on. Like, I'm not afraid of like back offs. I, it doesn't bother me. Like, it bothers a lot of people. Like, I'm not afraid of the driving. I have like a million gambling with an edge episodes to listen to for hours on the road. Like I don't care. You've only um, done six hundred. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I didn't. I didn't mind the uh, the road warrior thing um, and the because I think that turns a lot of people off. Like the back offs is a big thing for people. If you can eliminate that um, that anxiety and eliminate um, that fear, that can take you a long way with with card counting. So uh, so when you're saying you play no cover, mm-hmm. does that mean you'll split tens? Oh yeah, totally. I thought you meant like um, betting big when it's negative or anything like that. Oh um, no, well there's yeah. some people yeah. who do make these plays like uh, always insuring a blackjack or oh, I see, yeah. uh, they always stand with sixteen against a ten even if mm-hmm. it's negative, mm-hmm. uh, or they don't hit soft eighteen in certain. You know, I have I have an anecdote. Uh, when I was playing full time, I remember. Um, you know, I read Ian Anderson's book, Burning the Tables of Las Vegas. I love it. It was required reading for people on our team. Um, but I don't anymore recommend his cover plays. But I, I was in Vegas and I was going into what was the London Club at the time, uh, upstairs in, in Aladdin. And I, I decided I'm going to use the ultimate gambit, you know, the full, the cover plays, the cover bets, everything. And it's going to be amazing. And I go up there and I have this hot shoe and I win, you know, 24,000 or something like that in a shoe and I get backed off. And all I could think about was the EV I left on the table. You know, it, I didn't last any longer, but I cost myself. It's that same thing Joe, Joe's talking about of like, it hurts to leave any money on like give the casinos any of that money. And, you know, maybe it was anecdotal and it was just one time, but it felt like, why would I sacrifice, you know, this large percentage of my EV if I'm still going to get backed off because I'm 20 whatever years old and winning, you know, five figures. Yeah, yeah. For me, it's just is not as fun. Like, um, I think some people, I think it's just based on your personality. If, if you like kind of like um, trying to get away with it and flying under the radar, like that would totally um, suit you. But for me, like doing that, it just is not fun. Like I like... Um, rustling their feathers like i like i'm um, getting in their face um you know not not to uh, being meaner but just with my style of play like i don't um, and do you uh keep playing until you're barred or do you it's a, do you do any hit and run yeah it depends a uh, 90 percent is just play to a bar but it's usually because i'm in a rural location so there's not anywhere else to go for like four or five hours so you have to just play till it's over um but now like since i've um, a lot more recognized i'll do a little bit less um waiting till the back off because that novelty is a little bit gone now if i want to see all the casinos in the u.s i've been so many places and i've seen so many casinos and experienced so many things uh counting cards that i don't have that same desire to like um just um get backed off everywhere but that was just the engine that fueled me for the first couple of years so you're driving all over the country. Are you taking the time to be a tourist? Oh yeah, definitely. And seeing the um, museums or the mm-hmm. boat rides yeah. or the cl- yeah. whatever it is in a particular the thing. Town. Seventy um, miles until the thing. Until the yeah. thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the the, the eight hundred foot goose or whatever it is. Yeah, uh, yeah, tons of sightseeing uh, in between there. That's so like that's like one of the best parts about it is the the first best part is the freedom, uh, freedom of schedule. And then the second best part is being able to see all these things that you wouldn't have otherwise, you know. Well, the other thing, too, is that it's a meritocracy, right? You're going to get out as much as you put into it and nobody, Mm -hmm. well, they can try to limit how much you work, but Mm -hmm. pretty much you can work as much as you want or as little as you want. And And, uh, another reason why I didn't do the cover very much, I have like a list here that I I wrote down as I would, I would, you know, at the beginning, I kind of want to get as much information from casino managers as I could as to what their mind state was when they were backing me off. 
And um, the things that they would tell me, these are all like the reasons that they they assumed that I wasn't a card counter. Um, one of them was like, I talk too much to the floor and pit bosses. Usually APs just avoid those people. They don't talk. They don't look them in the eye. They don't like joke with them a lot. You know, they try to avoid them. Um, you know, talking too much to the deal where I'm playing. I'm th- some some people say I'm not looking at the cards long enough to be able to see what it is. Um, and uh, playing too quickly. Um, getting up a lot from the table, uh, going on my phone, but then I'm jumping in later in the shoe, but they didn't know that I was looking out of the corner of my eye every, you know, a couple of seconds, just keeping up with the count and stuff like that. And, um, so wait, so the, these guys would tell you why, yeah, yeah. why they thought you weren't a counter. Yeah. Well, I was trying to get the information out of them at the beginning. Cause I wanted to know like how a, like how come you let me play so long? Like, I just wanted to see what it was. And, um, and some of the things were just the deviations we do throw them off if the, if they don't know all of them and um, dividing by half decks was throwing them off on the double deck and uh, and going from min to table max was uh, one manager told me that was because he's seen card counters come and they do like the ramping up but if you have a big enough <laughs> bankroll it's min to max and so they're used they're to all confused. the people yeah. trying to play cover yeah. <laughs> um, and then um, go- and googling my real name and then seeing that like I have a career other than um ah, like before you know so. that was when you were playing with a mm-hmm. player's card now yeah. nowadays are you just a refusal yeah now i'm a, a lot more refusal now it's harder to get comps for sure yeah how long did it take you to get into the database uh it was about a month it was about a month from yeah. a month mm-hmm. into your starting yeah. play mm-hmm. yeah it's funny because i think a lot of people have this attitude oh my god i'm in the database my career is over and mm-hmm. basically everyone i know that has been in this business has made more money after they were in the database than before. Yeah. And Not because they were in the database, <laughs> just that it didn't really and it's cra- limit them much in it, you know. It's crazy because sometimes I'll go somewhere that I've been backed off before. Like last year, I, I went somewhere that they backed me off a year ago. I, I only got 30 minutes the first year. And the second year, I, I was there for like three days and I was playing rated. It just didn't make any sense to me. And they had biometric or like they had everything. And it just didn't make any, like it just... And that happens all the time, like this recycle of your playing time. That's why I feel like blackjack is still viable today is because uh, it's uh, we have just the right amount of players and a, a ton of casinos that are spread out. Most of these casinos only get one to two counters a year. And so it's enough for your name to kind of shuffle down to the bottom of the pile if everyone's moving around. So it's right. It's hard for them to get a handle on us like they give us enough hours so i have another stat here for you guys um because people ask me all the time how much playing time do you get before back off and i looked at all my results and the amount of time less than one hour has been 33 percent of the time playing one to four hours uh, and a back off happens is 40 percent of the time and then sessions that last over four hours a full uh, maximizing no cover is like 27 percent of the time so um 67 wow, percent of the time is over an hour no cover there's a phenomenon called the headwinds, tailwinds, uh, you know, uh, where we pay more attention to the headwinds, the things that are difficult than the tailwinds, you know. So this totally fits into that where he has equal number of sessions that are over four hours as under an hour. But we remember the 15 minute back off. Mm-hmm. So the people even at the boot camp we were doing this last weekend, they're saying like, well, how do you make money when you get backed off every 15 minutes? And it's like, well, it feels like you get backed off every 15 minutes. But if you look at the data, it's not, you know, a third of the time, it's it's less than an hour. And nearly a third of the time, it's more than four hours. And what about in uh, areas where there are multiple casinos in one city? Mm-hmm. Um, how do you deal with that? I mean... Yeah, it's, it, it gets tough sometimes. The flyering is just uh, a huge pain. Um, well, like, let's let's pick mm-hmm. a... I'm just going to pick okay, a city at yeah, sure. random, yeah, like... Sure. Uh, Say Biloxi, Mississippi. Okay, cool. Right. So, yeah. right. I mean, Biloxi, you go in. Yeah. Let's say you get four hours in the first mm-hmm. place, but right. now you get backed off. Yeah. Do you move out of Biloxi, or do you still try to play the other places in Biloxi? Now it kind of seems that way. It seems like Biloxi is kind of like a, a one day thing. Like you can get a full twenty four hour. If you just go out, you can get a full day, and then your name's gonna be flyered everywhere in that town. Um, I think there there are a few pockets of the country that are like that. But for the most part, it's uh, I haven't seen that experience. I think if you drive like three ish hours before, you're safe from a local flyer at most places, but not all. Like some places, like Louisiana, they get they send it like seven hours away. But uh, I mean, for the most part, but like if you're in the middle of the country, right? It, say you're in Chicago, mm-hmm. 
if you drive three hours out of Chicago, now you're okay again. You're it kind of yeah, it kind of seems that that way. Uh, a lot of a lot of big cities are kind of like that. It's an interesting kind mm-hmm. of rule of thumb. <laughs> yeah, but then what you, if you're yeah. like in a like in a Harris in Chicago? Would they alert alert all Harris? Across the whole country, or just the local ones? Yeah, I mean, t- I guess technically, Biometrica sends the, your stuff out to everyone who's subscribed, but um, it seems like only the local places get that right in the front center of their, you know, whatever they're looking at. So, um, you know, it also depends on your playing style too. If you're on a long, extended road trip, um, you can't just fly out to another another city. If, you know, if you if you want to be doing all the driving yourself. So, um, my fir- I mean, my first year, my approach was just like just just go everywhere like just drive like everywhere and just get as much time as i could and how long were you away from home uh, i was about seven months so like, straight yeah. yeah pretty much wow. yeah every now and then i'll take a weekend to go home visit some friends and family but it was i played a lot my first year it's crazy <laughs> couldn't get enough <laughs> how much did you tip much. <laughs> okay so the tipping I, it's so rare like it, it has to be a really special circumstance where i can quantify that it's worth it um i don't like tipping out of fear like that's something that bothers me like like a few situations i can recall where it was worth it was one time i was at a casino and the dealer was also the manager and was also the table games uh director you know it was a tiny place so i, I had no choice like i i, I don't want to piss what, this was person he the off, bartender so. too <laughs> probably <laughs> Um, so that was a situation where I thought it was, that was definitely worth it. Another situation where I was, I was playing somewhere and I requested a dealer that was incredibly fast, like 700 rounds an hour. And, um, no, wait, is well, that possible? 700 yeah. rounds an hour? Yeah. So th- this person was incredible. Like, um, they, they were like a professional gamer before this. So their hand eye coordination was phenomenal and they had all the chips lined up for me, like when you when you pay uh, or when you play twenty five dollars and and you uh, have a blackjack, you know they have the annoying like fifty cent piece and the yeah, ten, yeah. and then it takes a while for them. To, but he would like stack all the 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 twelve fifty, twelve fifty, twelve fifty in the whole rack, so he would just have it ready, so it can be as fast as possible. And then I worked out a deal with the manager, like, hey, can I pay you guys like a certain amount per hour to have this guy come at my table for his whole shift every time he's here? So that was worth it because I could quantify how much that tip was worth and how much I was getting out of it, you know. And you didn't come up with a seven hundred rounds per hour number. No, yeah, I was, yeah, I was watching it, and and oh, actually, I had the um, pit boss count for me the rounds. Because we kind of made it a game, like because everyone was just blown away, like how fast he was dealing and how fast I was playing. So I asked the 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 uh, pit boss, like, "Hey, can you count how many rounds per hour he's like doing?" So we did it for like you know sample size, like a couple shoes, and then we would just see, figure how much an wow. hour it was. And uh, and also, I'm thinking that pit boss was arithmetic. I'm still finding challenged. this hard to believe because <laughs> yeah. I mean. Uh, uh, were you playing one? When you say rounds, are you saying uh-huh. if you're playing three hands, you're counting that as three? Or are you counting um, that as one? One, yeah, one full round, yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, the I mean, and that's like twelve <laughs> shoes or something per hour. It was it was so great. <laughs> <laughs> and this is like they determined he, he can't be a card counter because, because he's he was, playing well, too yeah. Fast. And so then yeah. it was this game. You know, they assume they just have this gambler that's that's paying to have a fast dealer, and so it made this game out of how fast can he play. And, uh, that also alleviated their concerns too. I even th- one of the one of the other pit bosses told me he was like, "Yeah, this is our counter, this is our like anti card counter dealer," um, and it was like perfect. <laughs> um, they they ran into the wrong card counter. <laughs> yeah. Please don't throw me in that briar patch. Um, oh, and an- one other place that we felt was worth <laughs> tipping was when we were playing. It was like a mafia owned place, so that was probably worth it. Wait, a mafia owned place? Is this in the United you can't States? Just drop no, it was. That it was. And move on to it was international. Subject. It was somewhere in Europe, and it, they had they had a bad reputation. Previous, their other casinos were shut down because of like money laundering ties. Is this Czechoslovakia? This, no, was, I don't want to say because people have their hand in the pot at this place still. So, oh, but okay. um, but yeah, so that we felt that was worth. So it. actually, <laughs> that that brings up international play so yeah. have you you've started obviously playing internationally yeah and- i played a little bit in korea it's probably nothing like it was when you were there um but i mean there are still a few games here and there you just had to look for it and uh i i we um just had a really long trip in europe uh, mostly western europe and it was just like mostly a nightmare like oh it was so hard so many like I mean, you know, see a sea of CSMs, like just everywhere, everywhere you go. And the hours of operation, this is something I didn't anticipate was a problem in Europe was the hours of operation. Their table games are only open from like starting at like nine or 10 PM. And then they, they close like oh, one or two. So you spend all day driving to get to a place. You have to wait till nine. 
you see that the conditions aren't bad and then you have to drive two hours to the next place and then your day is almost over. It's like in the US, you can spend all that time driving to the place and you always have an opportunity to look and scout and see. But here it's a lot. It was so much waiting and so much driving, low limits, like everywhere. Wow, that's different than my experience. Before we continue with hearing about Joe's international travel, we're going to take a few commercials. Um, South Point has more than 10,000 games, returning more than 99%. This is more than anyone else has. In March, the monthly promotion is geared towards players who are already receiving a mailer. Rather than pick up your usual free play from Tuesday to Thursday, now you pick up from Monday through Wednesday, and you get the same amount of play on Friday or Saturday the same week. If you pick up the free play all eight periods in March, you receive twice the amount of your regular free play on Monday, April 2nd. The next video poker class is probably going to be in July. We have finished with the current semester, and when the next ones are coming up, you'll be the first to know about it. At videopoker.com, it's the best place to play lots of games. If you sign up for the gold membership, $8.95 a month or $79.95 a year, this allows you to get correction on most of the game. The game of the week is Max Action Poker. This is a 10 coins per line game where a lot of the pay schedule categories are juiced. In the double-double version, for example, um, you get the normal five coins for jacks are better two pair, but three of a kind goes up to 25, straight goes up to 40, flush goes up to 60, full house goes up to 100, and the four of a kinds get much bigger. So royals are 8,000. Straight flushes are 800 for aces with two, three, or four or 8,000. So these are significant boosts. It is easy to figure out the value of it by just plugging these numbers into Video Poker for Winners or other software. And then, of course, it's going to come out with like 198%. But you have to divide it by two because it's based on a 10-coin game rather than a 5-coin game. The um, But you need to work out the strategy because you're getting a lot, lot more for full houses and flushes and straights, which are big determinations of how you play. All right. We are talking to Joe, who still can't find his uh, last name. Um, now, you were t- talking about playing in Korea. Have you played anywhere else overseas? Um, let's see. I... I just uh, played in Guatemala, just like just like one or two shoes, just to see what it was like. But that was I wasn't there for a blackjack trip, and um, I didn't they, know they had casinos in Guatemala. Yeah, yeah they're in uh, shopping malls, you know, and they have armed guards with like uh, AK forty sevens outside the uh, the door. So oh, that will help you relax. <laughs> that, that yeah, was what Moscow was like when they had casinos, <laughs> but and, uh, and uh, metal detectors. And other than, you know, uh, Bahamas, I haven't played uh, that much international. I was actually so relieved to come back to the U.S. I was like, I love this country after our <laughs> Europe trip. I was like, I had uh, a new perspective on the state of blackjack in the U.S. versus the rest of the world. I mean, it's just the gambling culture is just not the same in other places. People don't play $500 a hand in the middle of nowhere in other countries. Like here, you can find $500 max tables in the middle of nowhere, like nothing around. And there's high limit tables like I'm surprised that the game, the tables weren't opening till nine o'clock at night because um, I haven't played in Europe in a long time. But mm. they would usually open earlier than that. Um, but uh, uh, yeah. but the other, like I don't know if you went to the south of France, but like in Cannes, mm. it seems like uh, the casinos are really only open in the summer or, or oh, very yeah. limited hours. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, and le- or. But it's great, like, during the Cannes Film Festival or something. But That might have been a problem, too, because we were there, like, in, in the winter. So um, that could have affected the hours, too. I also think um, I just want to touch on something. I feel like a lot of player, like, advantage players, they move on from blackjack. Not not necessarily because, like, the money is better in, a, in other plays. I mean, sometimes definitely. But um, I feel like for the most part, it's it's based out of... Because they just can't take the uh, the back offs and lifestyle anymore, which I totally understand. The back offs and I the get. and the travel. Yeah, yeah, I totally get that. Like it's it can be super hard sometimes. Like and you know it can feel lonely like without a team. Like I I get it, but um, I also still feel like blackjack is lucrative if you're doing it the right way. And I feel like card counting is still like a good way to make a living if you if you can get past like if the back offs like you know if you can make it work in your favor emotionally, then it can. I think it can be a great career for you. 
<laughs> now, um, obviously, your bankroll has gotten up high enough where mm-hmm. you don't have to worry about mm-hmm. max bets. <laughs> but have you? Did you reach the point where you decided to bet less because casinos take certain amounts better right. than others? Yeah, I um, um, a friend of mine, uh, AJ, he he um, he had this over he looked at his career for you know and he said he noticed that like when he would up his max bet you know it just um bring it back down and then it's a resize you know to be safe and that ping pong was just going back and forth for a long time so eventually he just he found a happy medium and just stuck with that and i'm 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 looking into that a lot more now because um I know it's like higher EV to like get the higher max bet out there, but if you have to, uh, you know, resize um, all the time. Well, I don't you... mean so much resizing. I'm I'm talking about like for example, I was mm-hmm. playing at a, a casino in Iowa. Yeah. And the they had a thousand dollar max. Yeah. And the guy walked by and he looked at my bet and he said, um, "Yeah, I had two hands of nine hundred." He said, "Is that a thousand? I said, "No, it's nine hundred. And he said, "Okay, because if you bet the max, I have to call yeah. the <laughs> casino mm-hmm. manager or whatever." I was like, oh, I never bet that much. Right. <laughs> you know? So yeah. eighteen hundred on two hands is not one thousand on one hand. So, I, well, I can't tell you tell you how many times I've gone into a place with like a thousand max, and I'll say to myself, okay, today's <laughs> the day. I'm going to just keep it at like five hundred. Let's see how this goes. And then the count just goes. I was just like, I just can't resist. Like, <laughs> oh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go down to five hundred. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. I would. So, I just that's just part of my personality. I just can't resist like getting the EV sometimes. Like even if it's better for me in the long run, but I don't have that concrete proof. I'm not a. I can't see into the future, so I just I don't want to. Um, I don't like having regrets. Uh, leaving leaving EV on the table mm-hmm. um, potentially. You talked earlier that you had two illegal detainments yeah. um as you know bob narcessian is uh, one of our favorite guests on this show mm-hmm. um did you was this anything he might be interested in or is it something you want to talk about yeah i think at the time i was kind of just starting out so i don't think i would have been able to afford bob at the time but so um this was in the midwest and they two security you know i just Manager came up. It was a really pleasant back off. He was actually really polite. And I went to go cash out. Security comes up. He's like, hey, come with us. I was like, no, I'm just going to cash out. And then they're like, no, you're not. And then two of them just like grabbed me, drug me into the back room and um, wouldn't let me leave. So was this Indian casino? Or no, what? it was state run. Huh. So um, I, I, you know, I, I called the lawyer. We, um, we talked to the casino and basically they ended up settling, but it was for a kind of a small amount. In that same in that same county, there was a man who was got his ass beat by the police, had a, you know exorbitant uh, medical bills, and he was only able to get a thirty thousand dollars settlement. So I had no physical injury. So it, it's uh, we kind of just took what they gave us and moved on. But I kind of wish, looking back, I wish I would have pursued it a little more and just held out on the money and just try to go for it all the way. And what was the second one? Uh, the second one was a. Um, it was like a. Again, another place in the Midwest. I don't know what the, what's with the Midwest. Why are they so aggressive? Um, I don't know. That Louisiana seems pretty aggressive too. Yeah. I mean, it, it's not just the Midwest. I uh, I went to this place. I got backed off. I came back a year later, and they 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 saw me playing, and they arrested me for trespassing. You know, um, and then I had to deal with that whole thing. It's just like they they never told me I was trespassed. Like they just backed me off and. Later in their shift reports, they said that, you know, that they, they were required to ban me for 24 hours, and that's all documented, but there was a security report that said that they, I guess that supposedly they said that one of the security guards told me I was 86, but the management, that wasn't the protocol. That's not what they wanted them to do. So then we had to fight that out in court, and I still, I ended up losing that one still. Um, and the judge, like, took a card counting class before, and he still did it inside with me for some reason, so... It was a really small town, and I just feel like people's their loyalties lie there than with uh, passing of, by a card counter. Out of towner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do either you or your girlfriend use disguises? Uh, you- we tried that a little bit. Um, we tried that in uh, on the East Coast at a really large casino. We got an Uber car, so our license plate wasn't the same. And you know, we I had I had a wig and had a whole different look, and she did as well. But they still ended up like figuring out who we were, and they updated us in OSN like with our names and everything. And we never showed ID. So, so when you it, said you trade off, <clears throat> I was also in a disguise when I was arrested too. So I was like, <laughs> oh, and what did yeah. they think about that? Uh, 
they that that added more um suspicion for them they're like oh you knew you're a trespass that's why you wore the disguise i was like no it's because i played like five places like in the town over so anyway, yeah. but anyway you mentioned that uh, you and your girlfriend trade off. So mm-hmm. how does yeah. that work? You do all this driving, and you're like, "Okay, honey, go yeah. to work, and I'll be here uh, yeah. taking a nap." I do. Yeah, I do all the driving. What we do is we we go. One of us will go play, and then the other one's just like waiting in the car, just uh, hanging out there. And little pro tip: we got a portable urinal that comes away in handy for not having to go in the casino and be oh, noticed. Oh, does she mind sharing with yeah. you? <laughs> Oh my god! That was, it was it was my idea. I think I've used it a lot more than she has. But. Uh-uh. So this sounds awful. Wait a minute! You drive for like four hours and then you just sit in the car for hours. Yeah, while... I don't. I think um, I can't speak for her, but uh, for me, I mean, I just yeah. Look, I mean, I, I guess it does sound awful, but I don't know. I mean, you know, we. Well, wait, and then, so let's say she plays for four hours, yeah. and you're sitting in yeah. the car for four hours, yeah. and I, then what do you do? I'm just like, hell yeah, she got four hours, let's make it eight. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but, um, but, when, but she yeah. Comes, when she's done, then do you go in and play, and she sits in the car for four um, hours? No, we usually, we won't do that. I'll I'll wait till the next trip to play at that place. We, we kind of trade off that way, so it's not, I think they would just notice me too fast if another car counter comes in the next day or something, so that's how we trade off. But if there's like a Starbucks or something... Uh, we'll get dropped off, and then you know we can um, hang out there. You if know. you're in a, a town yeah, with two casinos, right. do you go to the? Does one go? Yeah, to one we'll and switch one off. Yeah, we'll do that. So, um, yeah, if there's a place we can hang out while the other one's playing, we try to do that as much as we can. But sometimes, like you know, native reservation in the middle of nowhere, you just gotta hang out in the car. <laughs> like, <laughs> wow. But I'm also four years into this. I'm not, um, you know, I don't have 20, 30 years under my well, belt. Well, that would so. make it less likely yeah, for me still- to want to hang up <laughs> the car, you know. <laughs> so it's still, um, I don't know, it's still it's still exciting for me. I still I'll still enjoy it, and I still like um, beating the casino. Uh, I'll beat the casino enough to pee in my car. You know? <laughs> That's my motto. <laughs> Is there anywhere, any casinos in the U.S. you haven't peed in yet? No, you haven't played in yet. <laughs> Um, any casinos I haven't played in yet? Oh yeah, there's yeah, there's probably twenty or thirty I haven't even stepped foot in. Twenty or thirty? I think so. Yeah. Wow, it's not yeah. not very many. <laughs> but are they, are they in a particular section? Are they? Yeah, some of like the lower. Like I've never been to uh, to Colorado. Some of the, I've never been to the Dakotas. Those lower limit places. What about? Aren't there um, casinos in Maine now? Have you been all the way up to Maine? Um. Oh, have, I have we skipped those because they were kind of far from our because we were doing definitely some, far. Yeah, we we're doing some sightseeing on the uh, the national park, Cadia National Park up there, and that's all the way on the coast and the casinos. I heard the the conditions are horrible, so we didn't even try. It's in Bar Harbor. It's lovely. <laughs> it's better than the casino, sure. <laughs> all right, um, Colin, your a blackjack apprenticeship has been getting a lot of plugs today. <laughs> Anything you want to tell us about what's going on with uh, you guys? Uh, I mean, we just had a boot camp this weekend. That's why we're all we're all hanging out. Um, so we do this three, four times a year. We, uh, you know, have a two day training with people. Most of them are members of the site that they want to, you know, have the live training, learn some things that we don't feel comfortable sharing, you know, really on the Internet um, and, you know, network with the pros, all that stuff. So we've been doing that last. We did that Saturday, Sunday. Um, and sometimes we get a guest like Tommy Highland's been really kind and been a guest speaker a number of times. And, uh, we've had like ex surveillance experts come in and share from their side. Um, I mean, I don't feel a need to plug stuff, uh, but, uh, that's what we've been doing the last two days. Actually. Um, so have you moved beyond counting at all? Have you added anything to your repertoire? So I've been, you know, introduced to some stuff, but I just can't like the whole carding, for example, like I just can't do it. Like I can't do the scouting. Um, I just, when I'm, when I'm on the road, I want to just play. Like, that's just my personality. Um, that's just what works for me. And I can't like, it would drive me crazy if I, if I drove around for like a week or two weeks and not being able to put a single bet down, like that would just drive me nuts. So. We have another guy. He helps with all of our boot camps. He came. He came through a boot camp like six years ago. But he's moved on to strictly, uh, you know, more advanced plays, particularly hole carding. And so he gives a kind of a talk, kind of an intro to that stuff. And it's really interesting how much of it is personality. You know, yeah. um, Tommy Highland, no interest. You know, right. this other guy, 
uh, he counted cards for a year and then was like, nope, it's not for me. I'd rather scout, find the five. He's like, I haven't played anything with less than a 5% edge in, in, you know, years. And it's, there's not a right answer. It's personality and, and multiple ways to skin the casinos. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Joe, we're about to let you go. Is there anything that you wanted to tell us that we haven't asked you about? Um, I don't know. Just reflecting back, I'd probably try to eat a little healthier when I was on the road the past several years because I'm just starting to see the effects of that now. So um, That is a tough one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's about it, though. <laughs> Although, there are, you know, you can get some quality food at Waffle House. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've heard in Louisiana there are more Waffle Houses than schools. I'm not sure. Is that true? Probably the only place where you can get a deep-fried salad. Ah, <laughs> all right. So uh, before we get hate mail, thank you, Joe. Thank you, Colin. Thank you, thank you yeah. Richard. Go thank out and you. hit lots of royal flushes, everybody. Good day.